In real life, no corner is razor sharp again unless it's the edge of a knife or a razor, something sharp. But on a piece of furniture, the edges are going to be like this. They're going to have a little bit of softness to them. That's just the way that things are in the real world. Okay? I'm going to reduce the amount of that softness to about 0.1 because right now it looks like it's a little bit too soft. Let me re-render this. So that parameter right there, that 0.1 controls how soft or hard uh, the edges look, how soft or how sharp they look. Okay, so I'm going to go for about 0.1, which is nice and subtle and looks pretty good. All right, let's come over here to the picture frame and let's render this out. I want to see if I could catch something here and point it out to you, which is very important. And you can't really see it here in this render right here. So here's what here's what I'm going to do. Let me close that. Let me come up to maybe these books over here. Okay, immediately you see that there's a problem here. Something is terribly wrong. If you look at the bottom of the books where they meet up with the surface of the, of the shelf, it looks almost like if the books melted into the shelf and became a part of it. That's not good. You don't want that. That's a serious problem. The reason that's happening is because everything in the scene is sharing the same exact material that has the round corners feature turned on. So the shader is accidentally thinking that all the objects should look like they're part of the same object, which is not what we want. So what we need to do is apply a different material to those objects so that they get split apart and separated, so to speak. So how do we do that? We have to create another shader, just like this one, okay, another copy, and apply it to the objects that we want to look separate. So the way we can do that quick and easy is just click and drag this shader to another slot, and it'll copy it over, okay? And that's very simple after that. I'm going to hit H on the keyboard to open up the Select from Scene dialog here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the word book. And that's automatically going to select all the items with the word book in the name. I'll hit OK. So all the books. I also want to take all the picture frames. Okay. I want to take maybe the TV as well. I'm going to take all this stuff. I'm going to take the coffee tables as well and the picture frames that are on the walls I'm going to select those as well so basically you want to select any objects that need to look like they're separated from the rest of the uh, rest of the house and just apply this new material to those objects now when you do that since I made a copy of the material it copied the same name 3ds Max doesn't like that so I'm going to hit rename material I'm just going to type in a random text for name very quickly just to solve that problem easily Okay these ch uh, dining chairs and the table I'm also going to do the same thing so I'll apply the new material so let me come over here to some of these books and let me show you what happened let's render that out again and now the books should look like they're separated from the shelf it shouldn't look like they're melted into the shelf and when this finishes rendering out you can start to see there we go the problem has been solved we no longer have that weird candle wax melting problem with the objects. So I'm going to fast forward the video. What you want to do is select any objects in your scene that need to be separated and apply the new material to those objects. So it's going to be things like the moldings down here on, on the floor, the moldings by the ceiling, the light switches, all that stuff. Select it all and apply the new shader. Okay, once you did that, um, it's a simple matter here of just rendering this out. The problem is solved. Okay, if we render this out, just to test this out real quick, make sure everything looks good. If I spot anything, I'll fix it. If not, I'm going to say this is good to go. Okay, looks pretty good. All right, so last but not least, you see we have this artifacting problem here with the shader. We have all these little speckles. Looks almost like there's dust on the film of the camera that we're rendering out with. Uh, to get rid of that, all we need to do is increase the samples of the ambient occlusion uh, shader parameter. So how do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. We need to go to both shaders, okay? And let's go back to the main material parameters. Click on the little M right there next to the color to go to the uh, ambient occlusion parameters. 
Take the samples which right now set very low to 16 and increase that to something like 128. I like to use numbers that are power of 2. You don't have to in this case, but I've been conditioned mentally because I work so much with computers to always think in powers of 2. So I tend to use powers of 2 all the time uh, when I'm rendering with mental ray. Okay, so I'm going to use 128, which is going to look better. Keynote to make, the more samples you use, the longer the render time, the less samples you use, the quicker the render time, but the worse quality you're going to have. So keep that in mind. So I'll go to the other material. I'll go to its ambient occlusion material here, put 128 samples. Now if I render this out, render is going to be slower, but the quality is going to be higher. Okay, so you can start to clearly see that uh, most of that artifacting is gone. Okay, and if you have any artifacting you don't like, you can go ahead and continue to increase the samples until you get something that looks acceptable to you and looks good. Just keep in mind that the rendering time is going to get slower and slower as you increase the samples. Alright, so that's going to do it for Volume 2 of Production Instruction with 3ds Max 2010. We covered a lot of things. We covered uh, how to do a lot of hard surface modeling, things like wood and plastics. And So with that said, I'd like to thank you for supporting i3 Tutorials and uh, participating in this uh, second volume of our Production Instruction Series of 3ds Max 2010. Thanks uh, from myself and from everyone here at i3 Tutorials. We'd like to thank you for uh, just coming along and being a part of this. So, I'd also like to let you know that Volume 3 is right around the corner. We'll be releasing that uh, very soon. And that one is going to cover more advanced modeling. We're going to cover more organic things. And this volume we covered a lot of hard surfaces. Again, things like wood and stuff like that. In the next volume, we're going to cover high-res objects. We're going to focus on sub-D modeling, how to use Turbo Smooth in 3ds Max to your advantage, how to do more high-res detailed objects, and how to focus more on organic things. Things like cushions and cloth and things that are uh, more organic and a little more complex and harder to do and not so straightforward like doing say the furniture and the electronics and things that we did in this volume. Okay, So it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be great. And there's going to be a lot of stuff to cover in that Volume 3. And that will be coming out real soon. I hope you can uh, join us for Volume 3 and you come back for more training. Thanks a lot from everyone here again. If you have any uh, questions or comments, just drop by our forums and uh, let us know what you think. Give us any suggestions or uh, just give us a shout out. So thanks a lot and take care.